Good morning, y'all. Pete here with Green Dreams, and uh, I hope you're enjoying the short little snippets from the farm. I'm trying to get them done for you on a daily basis. It's definitely uh, a little work, but um, I'm really enjoying it, you know, so please like, subscribe, share. You know, I really look forward to getting inside in the evenings and replying to y'all's comments. Um, it's very enjoyable for me, so I'm going to try to keep these coming for you. So one of our biggest game changers here in Florida is biochar, and behind me, I have a biochar kiln. And inside of this kiln, there's a 50 gallon stainless steel drum. So this is a stainless steel kiln with an inner retort drum inside of it. And that inner drum will get filled with the feedstock, which is for us, local cypress. So just two miles down the road from here, we have a cypress um, mill. You know, they mill cypress on the regular. Um, and you can use many different feedstocks for biochar. You can use bamboo, you could use palm fronds. I've even seen them use mulch. Most recently, I saw somebody using seaweed. So the feedstock doesn't really matter what it comes from. Um, just, you know, some kind of natural feedstock that's obviously not chemical laden or something like that. So through the paralysis process, you know, I light all the wood around the outside of that inner barrel when I actually start this kiln here on the farm. And through that paralysis process, it's sucking all that moisture out of that inner barrel and it's turning it into charcoal. So basically my finished product is going to look like this. This is basically pure charcoal. This hasn't been charged yet. And once it gets charged with nutrients, that's when it becomes biochar. So that whole, or the Amazon basin, basin should I say, terra preta. You know, when you Google terra preta, it says black gold. You know, the indigenous people figured this out thousands of years ago. This is not new, te new technology whatsoever. Uh, this has been around for thousands of years. So you can, you know, they probably did it with fires back in the day. And right when that fire was done burning, you know, they loaded it with fish guts, maybe manure, maybe urine, any nutrients they could find, put that fire out, and then all of those nutrients get locked up in that charcoal. That's when it becomes that biochar. So for a while here on Sand Hill Farm, I had built a kiln, I had been going to get the feedstock, I had been making biochar, and at the rate we were using biochar and all the you know people that were asking for it, it just became unbearable. Um, very you know low profit margins, very labor intensive. It's definitely a lot of work. There's other ways to make biochar. This is not the only way to do it. I have friends that still do it the old style with making the fire. Um, but since I've gotten kind of into production, we recently were interviewed for a TV show on the biochar and that kind of made our biochar go viral. Um, I've had to find sources to get biochar from. So something pretty interesting and cool, the company I get our new biochar from, which this is what it looks like when I get it. And I get it in one ton pallets so it's two totes with a thousand pounds of biochar each the company i get this from the business partner is justin timberlake he has a lot of money invested you know from what i understand they've turned the top three golf courses in the country onto biochar compost tea they just did the miami dolphin stadium they're getting all types of government and military contracts with biochar i mean this this stuff is game changing guys i've read that biochar you know a half they say a, a fingernail sized piece of biochar for a very, very small piece of biochar can lock up a half acre in surface nutrient. This is game changing, especially here in Florida. You know, we have very, very sandy soils. Not, not likely we have clay unless we're on one of these ridges throughout the state of Florida. So we have a very low cation exchange and that means the soil's ability to actually retain nutrients. You know, with sand, we're not retaining any nutrients. That nutrient is just constantly washing away. There's not a lot of organic matter down here. I mean, obviously once we start mulching, we start to build that organic matter. So every fruit tree we put in, we top dress with biochar. We use this in annual beds. One of my mentors, who we did a video with Justin Rhodes with, Jim Kovaleski, did a trial with biochar in his soil blocks, doing it the Elliott Coleman style, and had unreal difference in growth. I mean, it was almost twice the size in the vegetable growth in one week, the one with biochar to the one without. So retaining nutrients, retaining moisture, um, you know, I can't say enough about biochar. I could probably do a one hour video running the kiln, showing y'all how we make it. I really haven't used the kiln in about maybe six or eight months because it is so labor intensive and because we go through so much biochar. And so, you know, we're very busy doing these edible landscapes. So I barely have enough time for my family, much less time to make biochar around here and only keeping the kiln to do some classes from time to time here on the farm. So all I can tell y'all, if you're looking for something to hold nutrients, hold moisture, look into biochar. I mean, th this stuff is game changer. Um, you know, I, I couldn't say enough about it. 
you know, just like the mulch, you know, these are mulch, compost tea, biochar, were my three main game changing, you know, amendments here for the soil. I couldn't say enough about them. So another neat aspect I'll point out about the company we're getting this biochar from compared to this biochar I was making, they actually use a state-of-the-art method for charging the biochar and they're using steam. So not only are they crushing it very fine, but they're using steam to actually expand the pores. You know, and that's how this biochar is able to retain so much nutrients in that surface area like I talked about. You know, there's pores all over this biochar. And that's another thing I'll point out, you know, when I'm done and I take this out of that inner retort kiln, this product is what I end up with. I still have to turn it into this. And for us, that was a very, very messy process, you know, grinding, crushing, dust, masks. I mean, it's still not finished once we get it here. So for me, it was just much more affordable, you know, to buy it in this bulk rate, bring it out to our clients, you know, I can, what's more readily available.